back for part two. <clears throat> How's it going, guys? Welcome to the most professional stream I've ever run. Professionalism. Professionalism. So, yeah. You enter the... Uh, the hut. <coughs> and uh, Hexia has some tea set out for all of you. And probably, like, some sort of black pudding meal. And, uh... I don't know, she's warming something up in a stew pot somewhere. And there's things that are, like, whistling all over the place. Like, it, there's boiling things everywhere. There's, like, flasks and iambics and alchemical supplies and chemistry, like, going on all over the place. And she's, like, grinding up a lime in a mortar and pestle. And she's like, oh, okay, you're here. Well, yes, what was it you wanted to know about, then? Well, don't all speak up at once. Yes. A lady of the court has been, uh... Under a curse of late, she finds herself unable to control flames which grow from her hands and which cause great burning in the forest. She also speaks in strange tongues when this happens. So, yeah, she's still, like, mortar and pestling and looking down at it while she's talking. She's like, are you sure it's a curse? What if she was just born with magic? Ignorant fool. In that case, we have also been sent in order to find one who might be able to tutor her such that she would be able to control herself and not burn down the countryside. Okay, well, what language is she speaking? Was not one that we recognized. Thus, I think, I think you'd recognize Irish. Okay, yeah. Irish then. And she's like, ah, yes, Celtish, yes, yes. Ah, uh, I see. <clears throat> and flames from the hands, you say? Aye. So she's, like, flipping through this big, like, gold-leafed book with a title cover in, like, French. Like, very cursive French, too. And she's leafing through it. Everything inside has, is, like, highly illustrated. And she's like, nope, not this one. And she, like, tosses it. It's like a 15-pound book. She's like, whoop! Pulls out one in German and starts looking through that one. This one has almost no illustrations, but lots and lots of text, and she's like, Okay, yes, she has destructive fire magic. I could teach her some basics. I know of this. Excellent. Uh, you would be able to temporarily move to her location? To help her out? She's like, oh, oh goodness, no. She'd have to come here. <laughs> Leave my house. I've never been in a better position in my entire life. No one's tried to kill me in years. I can assure you that this lady is of such a position that were you to come to assist her, that you would have certainly no one ever seeking well, I mean, Armageddon Sir Edward, this, this entire thing is done a little bit in secret precisely because we don't want anybody of any side causing any problems. Yeah, so when you say that, she immediately jumps in and is like, Ha-ha! Ha-ha! So you admit that if I went to this castle, there would be problems. Yes. Yes, but your protection... I will feel safe right here. Your protection would be ensured, but I agree that there would be problems if it were known. Yeah, so she's like, I've heard of this terrible knight from Salisbury named Sir Marcus. Absolute <laughs> ignoramus. Completely doesn't understand everything. Very racist. Hates anybody who's not a Christian. Uh, just drinks water all the time. Just, oh, terrible things. I heard he punched an elephant once. I never punched an elephant. How long did it take to get here? Like travel? Uh, yeah, like less than a day. It's 20 miles, so. How long do you think it would take for her to understand the basics and control herself? Ah, uh, you know, one or two years. Of how many sessions? Daily, of course. And now, during the winter times, travel can be a bit difficult. 
She'd probably have to stay here for weeks at a time. Now here is the problem, alas. Um, given that you are right on the border with and next to enemy Saxons who are enemies of our county, we are such a long period in such an exposed location. I fear for the lady's safety. Oh no, she'll be perfectly fine here. Absolutely great. Nothing bad will ever happen. I'll just make sure to tell them that some young woman is traveling alone every day down here and they'll provide protection. The Saxons really like me, you know. I provide lots of poultices. I think I need an intrigue to figure out if she's just intentionally trying to uh, mm. screw with us here, or she's being uh, I feel like she's being earnest somewhat, but not about the traveling bit. That felt very sarcastic. Yeah. Go ahead. Make your roll. Sir Siv? Uh, not under that context. I can, I can see if she actually knows how to train her properly. I can intrigue on that, but I... Trust. I, I feel like I trust too much that I know that she's just being sarcastic on the other bit. Okay, all right. Can, can I do the intrigue to see yeah. if she would actually know what she's talking about? Yep. Okay. That's the only bit I might consider. Okay, so um, you don't have a critical, so you don't know exactly what's going mm. on. But you notice that rather than relying on her own like knowledge or actually using any magic, she just seems to be reading a lot of books. So, um, Hextia, the, this lady that we speak of traveling here each and every day or even staying here and being away from her home is something that she cannot do. Well, and that's her problem. I would never seek to uh, remove you and put you in a place that would be harmful, seeing as how we're seeking your aid. Uh, but uh, perhaps you have some other tool that you could offer to us to assist in her training. Perhaps you mm -hmm. have some book of, or other manual which might be of value oh yes you could teach magic from a book sounds wonderful I wonder why no one's ever thought of that before maybe a pamphlet well I earlier when you were seeking what exactly was wrong with her or right with her what she had you uh, went through several books uh, no that's not true at all that, that it just happened. <laughs> so she's like grinding the, the the lime and she's now like grinding it super hard. She's like, no. That that was just double checking. But you verified it from a book. Yeah, I verified. Verified. I knew it all along. Uh and this book was out of character, this book was written in German. Yes. <laughs> I got the gist of it, but I can't think of how to move on. So it sounds to me like she might not actually be able to help. Well, it sounds to me like she could, but she also has the means of giving us the ability to help help ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounded ominous. What? What exactly did you mean by that rather frightening statement? I think he meant actually just buying the books off of her. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to, like, kill her and take the books. What? <laughs> That's no. why I thought you were like, we have the ability to help ourselves. No, I said that she had the ability to get, uh, let us help ourselves. <laughs> okay. Maybe I've, I've learned too much from Dobbin. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Well. So what's the play then? I mean, she's pretty expensive just for a consultation. Even a, like a borrowing of the book would be crazy. But that's my mindset right now. So, are you, I mean, are you discussing that among yourselves out loud? Or are you just thinking it in your head by yourself? Uh, since it's only in, it would be each individually, I feel like Siv's alright with discussing it out loud. 
So he okay. would bring so me up. So she was like, well, yes, sure. I could sell you such a, a book with annotations from me for about ten pounds. Which you recognize would be a ridiculous price for a book. I mean, even the prices she's charging for consultations are ridiculous, but for what you paid her today, if you buy the book, you could basically like build a small castle. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, if it will... Save the lady, it is worth it. I do found, I mean, we've come with this information now, I believe we could see what she thinks on the matter, rather than decide it now immediately and come yes. back. And why not shop around? I'm sure there are others who might also be willing to give When you say that, she's matter. like, no, no others are around. There's no reason to shop around. I'll I could sell the book for five pounds. I mean, she does. The lady does seem relatively urgent and wanting to know, but she is much closer to Merlin, and I know Merlin would teach her. Merlin? Well, I mean, how can I compete against a man like Merlin? I suppose I could let the book go for three pounds. As long as you made it be known that. She was taught by me rather than Merlin. Sir Edwin. Very well. Should the matter be productively and successfully taught to her, we will let it be known. Otherwise, we will let it be known that we had to go to Merlin to fix the error that your. Magic was unable to. <laughs> yeah, she's like, that's fine. I can agree to that. And she, like, gets out um, a dusty tome written in uh, German, and on the front of it is, like, a woman burning at a stake. Such cheerful imagery. Oh, yes. It's surprising all the things you can learn from books such as this. I like how silent Sir Marcus is this entire time. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we Marcus have enough on him that we can and he's just like, put together three pounds. <laughs> yeah, we, I was going to say... So go ahead. For the money? Yeah. yeah. For Marcus, we'll okay, I was going to say me and uh, me, Colleen, and uh, Marcus could take care of the one pound thing as how... <laughs> I <laughs> donated eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think she looks at the camera and says, going to eat well this winter. <laughs> Well, I suppose we shall take the book after she has annotated it and uh, ride home. How long will it take for the annotation? Well, a few hours. She she's like, while you, she's annotating it, she's having you like help her with her chemistry experiments. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's like, put put that thing on the fire over there, and then pour that liquid up carefully. Put the acid into the water, not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Sir Siv doesn't have a problem helping things like that. He's interested. And not seeing everything that she's doing as heresy like some people might. <laughs> heresy! I said it's heresy! Oh, Christ, forgive us! Yeah, okay. You, you've acquired your giant pile of stuff. You've got this huge book. You leave behind a horse and three pounds. She's like waving at you like, Bye! Make sure you don't get eaten by any Saxons on the way home. That would be very unfortunate. And make sure to spread my name everywhere. Hexia. H-E-X-T-I-A. <laughs> right, well, you do know how to go. spell, don't you? Sir Marcus will say yes. No one else. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes. I can write. Yeah, like, as she's closing the door, you hear oh, her muttering, Christ. she's like, no one's ever going to believe that Sir Marcus came to me for help. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Mark is just like, I God, I hope no one believes that. <laughs> they all believe it. Okay, yeah, you get the book and you bring it back. No, no crazy old men in the forest jump out to stop you this time. <laughs> well, we turn it over to the lady. Okay. And, uh, inform her the full situation in which we got it, I think. Unless <laughs> Eightfold disagrees. That's yeah, I, like, that. while you're informing her, I think Jenna goes, like, more and more pale. And she's like, are you sure we can trust this Hextia? It is the only uh, lead that we know of, thanks to Eightfold. So she's looking over the book, and she's like, well, I suppose I'll have to have my mother find me a German tutor. I suppose so. All of you can write in that you gained 50 glory for, for helping Lady Jenna find her groove. <laughs> Sorry. That's my first glory gain. <laughs> uh, so, I suppose next is off to the uh, Forest Sauvage. It's Savage. Mm, savage. <laughs> Savage. Savage. Starting to get fancy, it's for a savage. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go and try and... I'll hand this even... information on the sun. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> so, before you leave, I think a castle, like, steward boy arrives, and he's like, Says, says, a messenger has arrived from, from Sussex. He wishes to speak with the military commander. Is there Sorry. a Sir Edward here? <laughs> that is me. Does, they wish to speak with you immediately, sirs, the Saxons. Very well. Lead me to them. Okay. Uh, it's not just like a random collection of Saxons. It's actually Aethling Aesquine. Uh, and as soon as he sees Marcus, he's like, Sir Marcus! <laughs> I, I can't believe you're still alive! I haven't had you killed yet. <laughs> and uh, um, he turns to one of his assistants and is like, up the bounty on Sir Marcus's head. What's he worth? At least 20 pounds. Sounds good. Who is this again who's saying this? This is Aesquine. Aesquine uh, of Sussex? Yep. The prince? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Like, we're meeting with him right now as on yes. military matters. Okay. All right, yeah. So he is the one who is not our ally. He's... Yes, currently. Yeah. And he says, ah, Aidweld, you know, ah, the last my father saw of you was your ass as you stumbled off the battlefield. They say you've never seen a British wow. man run faster than, than when you and Sir Kaleen were retreating into Germain the Dragon's forces. It figures that two British men would hide behind the skirts of a Saxon traitor. <laughs> Get to the point, Whoa. man. <laughs> He's like, but wait, I haven't mocked the final member of your crew. He turns towards Sir Sib and is like, uh, who are you? Um, I'm the nephew of the, of the, uh, astute Sasha, the person who started the battle off so poorly. So he's like, oh, well, my apologies about your, your uncle. He was a good man. He fought well against our bear suckers. Uh, it, to myself, I'll kind of comment, why does nobody blame Sasha? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that he he like um not like a purse, but he like presents you something honorable worth like three pounds. Like a clothing item kind of thing? Yeah, like yeah. like a cloak of an honored warrior with like very elaborate house ale stitching on the back. He's like my father had actually meant to set this in honor of Sir Sasha's fall. We have not had a more glorious battle than the slaying at London. Hundreds of years. Surely our great victory there will go down in Saxon history, and it's all thanks to Sir Sasha. And so I present you this in his honor, Sir Sasha. Without him, we would not have risen to glory so quickly. Ah, uh, but oh, well, I, I digress. I apologize, Sir Aidwald. I realize I have come across a little brutish and boyish over the years, but my father comes to seek alliances. 
Surely Salisbury and Silchester have never before been in such dire need of protection. Having lost the vast majority of your peasant workforce and almost all of your personal knights, Sir Aidwald, how is your family coping with that, by the way? With such horrible losses, it must be <laughs> just so terrible. If you were to support our claim to Bretwalda of Britain, a true Saxon Empire could be established. With Salisbury and the entirety of Silchester behind us, we could easily sweep aside the, we the Wessex forces. Perhaps Salisbury would appreciate some of Somerset's lands. Surely an influx of Saxon homesteaders looking for work could bolster your peasant force? And Saxon patrolmen watching your roads. I understand you have a very interesting defense series, a combination of British engineering and Saxon ingenuity. Why, your whole county is just a perfect launching base for a campaign westward. Yes. With Silchester and Sarum under control of Sussex, we could quickly march everywhere west and northwest. All of Britain could be allied, and you are the linchpin. What can we offer you to join my father, King Ale, in helping him Bretwalda of Britain? Edward's just been sort of gloweringly silent while this whole thing is going on. Marcus will laugh and say, You put a bounty on my head, then you ask us for our help. Ah. I could remove the bounty if that's one of the terms that you would like. No, I enjoy your begging. Perhaps we shall be begging for your life soon. I think he, he was sipping from something, and he like <laughs> actually spits it out. And he's like, begging. Oh, I knew there was a reason I wanted to kill you so badly, Sir Marcus. Um, Ethelin. Can you make a... <laughs> Alright, I... I think that both you and him need to make, um, like, courtesy rolls. Not courtesy, but, like, uh... Pride? Hospitality. Hospi oh. Hospitality <laughs> rolls. Because you're both... Like, he's been doing it way more, but you're both, like, definitely edging hospitality here. Okay. <laughs> Fashion hospitality. All right. Yeah. Hang on, then let me just... <laughs> Hang on, I'm just going to roll for last year, because I would have had... I haven't done my last year's rolls, so... The first roll will be for last year, see if it goes up, and then I'll roll it. Okay. Okay, it went up. Uh, <laughs> Glad that wasn't your first roll. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I'm rolling. You might have had a serious okay. diplomatic incident on your hands. Because there are two critical fumbles. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, he comes off looking kind of boorish after a little while, and... Like, eventually he realizes it when everyone in the room, like, even his own a man are, like, staring at him. He just stops talking at some point. Uh, Sir Steve, what are you looking for when you're intriguing? Uh, I'm not intriguing right now. Oh. That was from before. Oh, that was from before. Okay. Yes. All right. Actually, so you... now would be a good time to intrigue, though. I'm I'd... trying to figure out what he's <laughs> up to. I don't like to just intrigue it's, everywhere here and there. Like, yeah, it's, it's, there's for there's nothing play. really to intrigue here. He's he's being completely honest with what he <laughs> yeah. wants. He's, he at, wants he's, like, he's blank checking you. What do you want to join the alliance? I mean, there's there's literally no intrigue. He's basically like, hey, we need you. Tell us what you want. What I mean, do you need? Edwald is... I mean, he's got 23 honor. He's not going to be the sort of guy who goes back immediately after swearing himself to Serdic to switch sides. So if anyone's going to do it, sure, it's but that, the rest that of Sure, but that alliance with Serdic's going to end at some point. You know, that's right. a yearly thing. Oh, is it just a yearly thing? Yeah. Every year you have to renew your loyalty to him. Hmm... That's how, like, all Saxon deals work. They, yeah, they aren't like British people where you're, like, lifelong loyalty and that kind of shit. They're, like, every year, every summer, you know, like, before the raids, you re-up and you're like, I declare for ale, or I declare for a squine. 
They're a very different culture than yours. Perhaps. Allow me to consult with my colleagues for a short while. Okay, yeah. So he just remains, like, standing at the table, and he's like, sure. Take as long as you need. I'm so not going anywhere. I think he probably like takes a buttered roll off of a tray somewhere and just starts eating it. Mmm. Delicious. So guys, um what do you think about bargaining for that whole area of Wanboro and that area added to Salisbury? I'd say no. Because we're already sending forces in there to try and fortify it under the other guys. So if we can get these guys to agree to support us in it, then we can allow our forces to stay in there, fortify themselves, and not get attacked by either side for a little while. Actually, I think I'll have to change my position. I feel like Sir Siv will take the most advantageous situation toward like keeping Salisbury afloat and making Salisbury stronger, but that is not the, like the honorable decision to make because that would be going to Sussex because it's such a large. It has control such a large area, and it does promise a lot. Plus, right now we can make the terms, but I feel like given my current glory and certain people's hatred of him, it is not my call to make. But I will voice that comment. So, what is your guys' thought on my overall logic there? Decide with these guys instead? I mean, for next year. Uh, I mean, it's really uh, for like next year. It's not, it. it's not... It's Marcus is just... I I mean, we could, but like, Marcus hates this fucker. That's what I was like. So, yeah. Out of character, what I'm asking is, are you... Personally, guys, okay. okay with what oh. I'm saying because I, as the most senior knight, I can just overrule and ignore you guys. And the question is, yeah, yeah, are you out of character? I love, that. I love that you're like, I can ignore you. And then you go to the countess and she's like, well, actually, I asked for everybody's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like, Marcus would go along with whatever or would likely go along, but he's just going to get more and more bitter. Uh, I think he is still kind of looking at the situation right now as like Salisbury's fuck. Um, there's no way we could stand by ourselves as the way he originally hoped. You know, by maybe uniting with a few of the na neighboring, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, like looking at this map, where is there that's just like Britain anymore? Yeah, there isn't, right? Like it's now Saxon everyone's everyone. What do you mean, Britain? Like, <laughs> you know, no, like, non-Saxons. Non Saxons. Okay, so allies, currently though. under control of no Saxons is the Southwest the west and northwest and direct okay. north okay so just the red and the red and the blue are okay. currently under sex control kent and in the far north uh dara are uh both saxon lands as well okay but i mean you've probably heard rumors of knights from all of these lands selling out and like going in mercenary just to make enough money to live through the year. Because everybody's got problems. In fact, you've probably heard that there's a lot of Salisbury Knights who, like, don't show... They do, like, their 40 days of service, and then they spend the rest of the year, like, mercenarying for the enemy. Because they need the money. Like, they... Their peasants are literally starving and dying because they're not enough men to work the fields. And so they gotta, like, go out and get money to buy food. So... My proposal to him is going to be that he supports our you want annexation of Marlborough, Wanborough, and the settlers. Or... Okay. So that's... That's it? That's all you want? I mean, do you guys have thoughts on... Is it, not... it, we're, we'd be su supporting him in his endeavor westward. We wouldn't have to fight with him, or would we have to fight with him? Well, that's something you'd have to negotiate with him. I'm ask, um, okay. We will allow a launching point, but we will not participate personally, given our manpower situation. That and avoiding fair. tribute is also very important. Yes. That's going to be really difficult. Yeah. I mean, all of the Saxons so far have been like, either you march for us, or you pay tribute. 
So saying hey, we're tribute. not going to march for you and we're not going to pay tribute, that's... We will propose single tribute. Okay. I just say we march. What the hell? <laughs> You're like, uh, fuck it. Let's just yeah. betray the guy we're working for now. Let's march. No, I mean, wh why would you want to... Look, right now, the guy we work for at least is kind of like has some kind of Christian... I don't say Christian roots, but at least some roots to... You know, he he's yeah. the least worst of both worlds. Like, and I mean, uh, I mean, his, as a his compromise, father and grandfather were that. British, yeah. so he has he actually does have a claim to the the actual legit. Yeah, the rest of those foreign invaders, in like I think at least that that's the way I think of it. I mean, we still at least this is the best of a bad situation. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, though West Essex and Sussex have overwhelming force, especially if we're not on the other side, and we don't have all that many people. So, in terms of keeping, the question the, is like: Are we thinking more about taking the easy way, or are we trying to think of like we will do what is right, and like you know all of that? So that's really what the... Aidwald is thinking what will keep Salisbury alive and strengthen it for when we need to face foes again. So my proposal, I mean, you've already heard it. It's support our annexation of Marlborough, um, single tribute, and we don't march with them. And some settlers. Our Dorset and um, what's it? Dorset and Somerset are part of the uh, forces of Wessex. They're who you're currently allied with. Okay. So he See, offered I, us Dorset. And Silchester, Silchester's part of uh, Sussex? Silchester, half of Silchester is part of Sussex, and the other half is part of Salisbury right now. So, uh, Sir Blaine's, well, Duke Blaine's, not Duke, Baron Blaines, the steward of Levcomagus, rallied like half of the county to Salisbury in the name of the Countess Ellen. And the other half, basically, Saxons just rolled in and everyone was like, we surrender. Do you guys think that we could maybe try and get control of Somerset, Dorset, Salisbury, and then, uh, well, that's what they, oh, uh, so what Sochester. was his initial offer? And form like a duchy of our own. He didn't have an initial offer. He was like, what do you want? Do you think we could try and get a duchy for, um, what's his name, Robert? Essentially, if you get Dorset, uh, Somerset, and Silchester under us, then... Yeah, that would effectively be one. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would like that, to f fight for that. Um, yeah. So... That would be worth fighting for to defend and, you know, what pay you maybe seeking? some tribute for some level of independence, maybe? Yes. Allow us to administer Somerset and Dorset and we will pay tribute to you. That's your offer? Yes. Administer. So annex. take it? Yeah, annex. Well, that's a, that kind of thing they, that, like, you can't just change that around later, so it's not really beneficial to him. So it's like he's fighting a war to help us take it. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, That's no, we'd fight I for him. Sure. No, we'd fight for him, but we'd want... See, he, like wants to, he wants Brett Walda. We would fight underneath him to take out his, one of his main opponents. Yeah, and we want Somerset, Dorset, and Silchester, uh, and that we will support their claim, essentially. I think we just say Somerset and Dorset. I think we're getting a little greedy if we're trying to claim his section of Silchester too. Okay, so is this what you're bringing to him? Yeah, and we get to keep the part of Silchester we already have. Let's put it that way. Well, just don't bring up Silchester. So he, like, yeah. counter-proposes you. He's like, I don't think that's going to work for my father. But allow me to make you this offer. And he starts, like, redrawing lines. He's like, I can't give you Somerset and Dorset. They're far too valuable. And more importantly... Dorset has a number of ports, specifically Dorchester, which we desperately need. However, immediately, I could replace 
all of the lands of Silchester underneath the Barren Plains. And I would allow you to take Marlborough, and we would even aid you in reclaiming it. Uh, Salisbury, or could use a Saxon army or two behind it. In exchange, you keep all lines of trade open to us. You block trade with anyone who is not of the uh, Essex-Sussex alliance, and you back our vote for Brentwalda. You don't have to march for us, you just have to administrate our lands. And one tribute will be fine. That gives you three counties. A neat duchy right in a specific without trade access, area. Without access to the sea for trade, though. Yeah, but look where you're at. I mean, you're the... We would control the... You control east-west roads for, like, <laughs> most of Britain. Yeah. Well, you say... Um, no trade with anybody that's not part of the alliance. What about neutral parties? So, <laughs> he looks at the map, he's like, what neutral parties do you think exist? Areas that aren't currently claimed by by lands. Yeah, so you're like, your, your map says that, like, Tribute Run and Lowe and Zap are, are not claimed, and he's like, oh, they are part of the Essex Alliance. They just don't know it yet. Ah, very well. I will will huddle again. I think it's a fair offer, and I'm willing to go for it. We, um, what was it? It was uh, the Wessex guy who warned us about rumors earlier. <laughs> Not rumors, um, seeking alliances. That yep. makes sense. I, don't, I just don't like double tribute. <laughs> it's single tribute. No, no, I mean from, from Wessex. You don't have to pay any tribute this year because you're marching under their banner. I know, but it's like yeah. the the march or doubles is kind of crazy. Well, yeah. it turns out that when someone else is in charge of your military forces, they really like it when you march for them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna propose uh, accepting it. Anyone against? Yeah, I'll support months. your uh, your comment to the lady. Based on the value of like military support, I will Based inform that. him that we find it a most generous offer, and we will put Whoa, it before the council. We didn't even count. hear from Sir Calleen. It sounded like Marcus was against it. Yeah, I want to hear from Sir Calleen. What are your thoughts here? Cool your jets, Aidweld. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Calleen, I sus knowing Kai, I suspect he'll be fine as long as he gets a cut of the lands. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a bit like Kai. I don't yeah. see him taking the moral high ground on this. <laughs> I, I just want, actually this year, I just want to protect as many of her people as we can, so whichever's least dangerous. Uh, for you, what do you do with Kai? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. What do you think is least dangerous here? This feels least dangerous to me. Yeah, military-wise, I feel like Sussex and um, Sussex are much stronger. And while our area is being used as a staging ground, they're actively going into Somerset and Dorset to attack it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the fight will be outside of our location. Not That's necessarily all. outside of our location, but at least they'll be going into Somerset and Dorset. So even we if won't it be on the falls defense, back, we're we here will as have the a large army here in case they attack us. Yes, yeah. we'll have a lot of people here. That's the, that's the point I'm getting at. That would probably be the best because we need protection right now and unless they're far away and they can't get here quicker than an invading army could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, is that a affirmative? A yes, Kai? Yeah. Okay. Okay. By the way, Arthur, your making of these maps makes understanding the full situation extremely easy, and I can yes. actually contribute Thank now. you, thank you, thank you. Thank the audience. They were demanding of it. Thank everybody in the audience. Thanks. Okay. Now, oh shit, I'm doing the wrong color, aren't I? What color was Salisbury before? We're just going to go with green. Yeah. There we go. 
Uh, there's the new south. Now, obviously, this is the theoretical border. You yes. haven't, you don't have control of Marlboro yet, so. Yes. And I feel like I should change the colors around. Although, technically, they're still your enemy until the end of the year. We'll flip the colors then. So, I think what happens is, is like, before the night's done, is, is that, um... <laughs> How fucked up is this? Your forces are fighting under the banner of Serdic to take Marlboro for Wessex, and an Essexian, like, Saxon army shows up, like, two weeks later to help them take the city. <laughs> that kind of shit that can only happen in a role-playing game. Interesting. So, yeah, so like, before the end of the year is out, Wessex is going to know that you switch sides, but it's not going to be for a little while. Okay. Good to know. So, be ready to hunker down, guys. So, no, uh, Marcus, did, did you want your uh, your bounty removed? <laughs> That's part of the deal. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So, he, yeah, he, like, turns to the scribe that he was having, like, make a new bounty for you. It's, like, it's this perfect, like, ink drawing of you. And then, like, I think that uh, Ace Gwine, like, hits it with his hand and, like, ink goes all over it. He's like, no, 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 tear it up. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> and the scribe is, like, actually crying with the hours of work he put into perfectly reproducing Marcus. <laughs> like this short British man... He's like short Colin Firth. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. All right. You you have now betrayed your allies, kind of, maybe, and thrown your support behind A. Squine and Ale for Brett Walda. So what's the plan? You want to wrap up the year? You want to go to the Forest Savage? Um, I don't know. How much time do we have left in the year? Uh, A... <laughs> <laughs> However much we need. You're one week into the year. Yeah, I guess I'd... we go to the forest savage. Okay. Because I think that's what we agreed to at the beginning. We do the first and the second. Okay. Yeah, you ride off to the forest savage. Uh, tell me who you're bringing with you. So we're seeking information about the sun. Yes, you're seeking the information about the son of Prince Medic. I suspect it would be us and our squires, would it not? Okay. I think that's all I'll bring along this time around. Do you have an extra roundsy for that squire who lost his? <laughs> I have plenty, yes. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think you probably get a, uh, an earful from your stable master. Like, I can't believe you didn't bring that back! <laughs> I thought I raised you better, young man. Respect the horse. Gotta respect the horse. Um, yeah. I'm getting some feedback somewhere. Anyway. So, what path are you taking to get to the Forest Savage? Since there's a couple different ways to get there. So, this is the year where we're still allied with Wessex. Oh, not yes, yet, it's still Essex. 499. So, I suspect we're going through uh, Gloucester and that whole area rather than going through Riddichan. <laughs> Especially me. I don't want to go through Riddichan. Okay, so the actual area of the Forest Savage is uh, is very specific. It's not just like a random forest. It's the triangle between like Leicester and Burton and Ryston. So it's like here to here to here. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, if you're, like, going to Gloucester, you're going kind so of... So, we go to way. Clarence, and then we follow the road up towards... Okay, yeah, you're going to follow the King's Road. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you ride through Marlboro, and, of course, Marlboro's a mess. Like, the, the Saxon army has only just arrived. No one actually told... <laughs> Sir Jermaine the Dragon anything like your messenger has barely like just arrived when you show up and he's like arguing with the messenger as like these Saxons are assaulting the walls 
And he's just like, what do you mean? The Saxons are our allies now. I can't keep track of anything around here. Where is Sir Marcus? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, you ride across Marlboro. Anytime you come across peasants, or, or like, basically anyone on the roads around Marlboro, they immediately, like, jump off the road and let you pass. And, uh -huh. like, hide all of their valuable stuff underneath rocks. They just avoid you and like do their best not to get robbed. No. Oh. Was someone saying something? It looks like Colleen froze. Yeah, it does look like Kai froze. <laughs> I feel <laughs> sorry, never mind. Uh so when you get to Sirenchester, uh and County Clarence, like a group of knights stop you with, like, full parade armor and lances out, with, like, banners hanging from their uh, lances. And the lead, like, knight of the four of them, like, rides out to meet you and is like, Who passes this border into Clarence? I am Sir Edward of Salisbury. We seek permission to pass through your land. We offer no our... permission for Saxons to cross our borders. We are not Saxons. We are English Knights of Salisbury. Is it not true that Salisbury has allied itself with Wessex? That is indeed. Clarence allies itself with good King Nantliod, a true and honorable British man, and great lord. Turn back and return the way you came. You will not pass through our borders. How many of them are there? There are four. I am back. That we oh, merely seek. I was just Perhaps you can escort us to the northeast. To the northeast. So he's like, you wish to go to Warensis? No. This is the road we're trying to take, right? Yeah, the King's Road. Yeah. Yeah. Past Warensis and out into. It. So he's like, you wish to take the King's Road northeast? Yes. Yes. So he kind of looks back at his other knights and says, This might be acceptable if you were to stay to the King's Road. What are your names? I am Sir Aidwald. I have heard of you, Aidwald. They say that you are a man of great honor. Is this true? I strive to be. Then you will give me your word that you will not stray from the king's path. I will give you my word. And I will. We will not stray. On behalf of your companions as well. I will do my best to enforce it. That is not good enough. I need. I will give word. you my word that they will not stray from the path. <laughs> now, yeah. uh, my, name so Siv. Smile on his face now. my name is Sir Siv. My name is Sir So. We will not intentionally stray from the path, but if something were to attack us and force us to go off the path to fight this enemy before returning to the path, would that be straying from the path? So, uh, yeah, you step up, Siv, and he's like, it sounds as if we have a lawyer here, boys. I Do feel there is a need to. Do not the path. Not even if someone were who had merely offered by a short distance were in need of aid. Leave the aid to true British knights. Men of Clarence will solve any problems needed along the road. Very well, we shall stick to the road then. And you're certain you don't want to send one knight with us to make sure that we don't stray from the path. See, so, when you say that, he says, Do you not believe we can trust the word of Sir Aidwald? I or believe you can trust the word of Sir Aidwald, but I would like for there to so be Are you so villainous that we must accomplish you? Uh, Accompany you. I am so wary of things that may happen that I feel that the, that your being there to verify if something did happen would be helpful. So he, yeah, you're like talking huge words and he's just not understanding you. He's like, we will send no one with you. I will write you a writ of travel in my name and you may pass the King's Road and only the King's Road. Do not leave the road for any reason. If you keep to the road, you will be perfectly safe. Uh, sorry, sorry, Edward. I think, yeah, I'll back down after that. Um, 
I'm going to give my word, unless it seems explicit that one of you guys are not willing to accept it. Wait, one of your party members is like, I'm totally going off the road. Look, my toe's off the road right <laughs> now. I'm stepping on gravel. Woo, what you going to do? You're going to make thing me do this passion this... rules to beat you guys back onto the road. Yeah. Well, my whole thing isn't that I'm going to go off the road, but that something might force us to, is, the, is why. Like, oh, hey, there's a bridge. The bridge is out. What are we going to do? I mean, there's no bridge, but you know what I mean. Yeah, so I give my word and we get the writ. Yeah, so uh, the writ is filled out in the name of uh, Sir Brisk uh, of uh, Cotswold. And it gives you permission to travel through the King's Road throughout the season of the summer uh, to travel north. And in... Are you guys, like, stopping in every town and, like, getting food and stuff? Or did you, like, bring enough to I mean, I'm sure we brought supplies, knowing okay. we were going. All right. We brought well, supplies, but would the writ include stopping in towns for gathering Yeah, that supplies? would be fine, like, stopping at... So there, there's not really, like, an inn culture yet. You would probably, like, stop at a mess hall and then, like, sleep in somebody's house by, like, paying them money. So, yeah, I'm sure we brought supplies, but unless Sir Aidwald says otherwise, I feel like we would stop every time, too. To... Okay. Yeah, I don't see any reason yeah, why. Yeah, there's no problem. Uh, you travel north to Kinton, and from there you can enter the Forest Savage. All right. Uh, I suppose we do so. All right. So what you are hunting is specifically the uh, son of Prince Maddock. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now, who is leading the hunt? So we come to this question again. <laughs> um, so Prince Matic, for referential terms, is... Huh. The bastard son of Uther. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit, Robert had loyalty Pendragon that he could have used, but... Uh, I don't. Yeah, uh, I would have allowed loyalty Pendragon here. Totally. Yeah, but I don't have it. Robert had it. I don't feel any loyalty here. Um, I mean, we kind of gave... Did we give him uh, our word that we would find him? Give who your word? Uh, the. That's a good question. So, how well, about... Yeah, like, I'm going to use loyalty. And I'm like, yeah, to who? <laughs> I was thinking more honor because we were going up. It. Honor roll because I need us to succeed and get back so we don't have to violate yeah, our... Yeah, that's not going to mm -hmm. fly. There's the, your personal honor isn't at stake, the Forest Savage. Specifically, you could choose any number of other paths to get back. I've got a loyalty. <laughs> You're like, I've got a loyalty of some kind. I'm sure I could use it. Loyalty yeah. Saxon. <laughs> Family hate Saxon. Uh, I don't see uh, any passion. Wait, wait. You're like, I really want to use a passion here. Well, guess Actually, what? <laughs> here's... Here's an argument for anyone who has a really high hate Saxons. We're trying to find the uh, yeah, lost like... lord of the Britons so that, <laughs> to help us overthrow the Saxons here. Oh, that's mm, fine. No. I hate the Saxons. I've got 19 hatred of Saxons. <laughs> the oh, problem God. with that you is really I have want to no do this, hatred. huh? Fine. You know what? Yes, we... you can roll hatred Saxons on this. Let's do it. <laughs> that's, that's to get anybody who does it a 12. And this is, this is specific. Marcus, you've now like locked it in. If I'm you not, find not, the son I, of I Prince Maddox, I was talking. You, I was not saying I want to roll it. Oh, I was saying that I have a hatred of Saxons. I have a reason to want to do this, but I don't think like a hatred of Saxons would actually be fair, just because yeah. this is not a like it's. I know I would allow it, but I mean, you would have to follow through the whole way. Like you would have to definitely like, work your ass off to put this guy on the throne at the cost of every Saxon in Britain. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and there's no <laughs> of way. I can actually I, can really I feel like a better way is just to go back and see if we can hire an expert. <laughs> Perhaps we have a lot of towns that we went through. Perhaps there's yeah. an expert. That can seeing as how you were you, you want to ask in Kinton if you can find somebody? Yeah. That seems like it's... Yeah, I mean, for like, <clears throat> uh, probably like 30 denarii a day, you can hire an expert to enter the Forest Savage. Like, most people won't enter it. Just because they say that the fairies have been acting up lately over the last few years. But uh, there's an old man named Sid who will... Uh, you know, I, yeah, let's have it take place. Like, 
at the edge of the forest. You're like looking for somebody, all the townspeople turn you down, and there's a woodman named Sid with like a bow, and he's like, Yes, I can take you where you want to go in the forest, Savage. You seek the boy, Maddoxon. Did we mention this? Yet? Or 